you have a 2007 to 2018 Jeep JK Wrangler? Have you ever thought that your factory head unit is lacking? Would you like to have wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto in your Jeep JK? I'm Mike with Trail7, and in this video, I'm gonna show you Sony's new lineup and how we made it easy to install yourself with our plug and play bundle. So this is exactly what our bundle is gonna look like. This is what you're gonna receive. It's going to have the dash kit already installed. It's gonna have all of your factory cabling, all of your modules, and everything that you need for a complete plug and play system. So I have two great options to talk about. One is the Sony 4000, and the other is the Sony 6000. Both compatible with the 2007 to 2018 JK Jeep. Both of these are, are a huge upgrade over the stock head unit. The biggest change you're gonna see out of both of these is the 6.9 inch screen. That if you have anything like what I had in my stock JK, which was the CD player and the very basic unit, you're, you're gonna be so wowed by what these offer. In addition, both of these units have a huge power upgrade over the stock unit with 55 watts per channel. Both offer wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Both are Sirius XM ready. Both are Maestro compatible, which are gonna come pre-flashed for your vehicle to maintain all of your factory settings, such as your steering wheel controls and vehicle diagnostics. So those are the similarities. Let's talk about the differences. The 4000 has a resistive touchscreen, has anti-glare screen, and comes with a one-year warranty. The 6000, has a capacitive touchscreen, which is slightly more responsive than the 4000. It has a rear facing HDMI input, which enables you to plug in any of your streaming devices, Roku, Apple TV, any gaming device or anything like that. This also comes with a three year warranty. You can't go wrong with either one of these, either the Sony 4000 or the Sony 6000. They're both gonna be a huge upgrade over the factory head unit. And I'm gonna show you how easy these are to install. All right. Now we're inside the vehicle and I'm gonna show you how to remove all of the factory dash and how easy this install actually is. The first step is disassembly and that starts with removal of this lower dash panel. So it, it's one piece under here and if you put your fingers right underneath the steering column, you can just pull straight at you and lower all the way down and slide it out towards you. Go ahead and set this piece aside Behind the panel, there are two screws that you need to remove. One is here and one is here. With a 932nd socket wrench, we're going to go ahead and remove those. Remove the other one. A hey, recommendation on all of these screws that you take out from your dash, go ahead and drop them in your cup holder. We're of course going to need those for reassembly. There's one more on the dashboard here. There's a total of four of these screws, two under the dash, one up on top here, and there's one behind the window, the window switches. Recommend a, a panel remover right underneath the window switch panel. It pops right out. Behind here, it's a two-way lock. Push that up, lock that down and it'll pull right out. After you disconnect that, go ahead and store that in the cup holder. And then there you'll find the fourth screw to install. After that, that's out, you're ready to remove the full dash panel. Recommend go ahead and lowering your steering wheel all the way down. Makes it a lot easier to navigate around and you can reach up on the left side behind the speaker lever and right up front here and you'll see it pulls right out and there's no need to disconnect the air vents and store that in the back seat as well now that we have the dash apart you'll see there are four screws surrounding the stock head unit Once you have the screws out, to get this out, 
just pull it straight out at you. A little bit of wiggling and it'll come right out. Once this is out, the head unit has four factory connectors. And these will pop right out with the pressing in the tab, the safety lock tab in the back. There you go, your stock head unit is out. All right, the stock unit is out. The next part that needs to happen here is to remove this lower panel. What a recommendation though, is to make it easier to put, go ahead and put the vehicle into drive. So with that, I'm gonna put the parking brake on, turn the auxiliary on, and put it into drive. So the reason for that is to remove this panel here. And similar to the panel that's under the dashboard, just pull the top tabs straight out. There's a U-Connect box that not all are equipped with, equipped with stock. However, if yours is, you're gonna want to remove a cable that's connected to that. You can set this aside. Again, with the 932nd uh, socket wrench, there are two screws mounting the Uconnect box in here. One's on the bottom and one's up top. What I recommend for this bottom piece is there's a little screw in here that's a little hard to reach. What I recommend is having a magnet strip or a pair of small needle nose pliers. If that screw falls in there, which I'm sure it will, I'll be able to get that out with my little magnet stick here. Of course, there isn't much room to work in here. You're moving the Uconnect box, you want to remove the USB. There are two clips connecting the USB. This larger one, which you're going to leave intact, and the smaller one is the USB, which we're going to use. We're going to use that in order to install a new USB cable to the new Sony head unit, and that's going to allow you to use your factory USB port for charging purposes. So this cable is included in your bundle. It's gonna come uh, out of the box that we send you attached, connected to the Sony head unit. It may be easier to go ahead and disconnect it in order to be able to fish it down into the console here. So we're gonna continue pulling this cable all the way through to remove the slack from down below Go ahead and connect the cable that you've installed to the factory cable that was plugged into your Uconnect box. And there's plenty of room back behind here to pull all of the access cable up into the back area of where the head unit will, will set. All right, now that that's fully installed and all of the cabling that you have that you'll be able to tuck down beneath you can reinstall the Uconnect. Even though the Uconnect is no longer functioning, um, I would recommend go ahead and reinstalling it back in its place in case later on down the, the line you wanted to reinstall it for something. The, the one screw that's a little difficult to get back in is here in the bottom. What I recommend doing is go ahead and sliding that into the, the slot on the Uconnect device holding that with the back of your hand and feeding that into its slot. Otherwise, you run the risk of it falling into the console. There you go. Now let's install the second screw back into the Uconnect device. And that's it for that piece. I'm gonna go ahead and, and um, wrap up some of this cable here. I'm going to put a zip tie on it just to get it out of the way. In your installation parts bag that we provide, you'll find the navigation antenna. Let's go ahead and get that installed. You'll need this in order to operate your CarPlay navigation system, of course. All right, so in, in order to install the GPS antenna, uh, the best place that we found which is most accessible and, and unobstructed 
would be right here on the dash behind the little eye. Um, I'd recommend that you prep this area with alcohol, cleaning, etc., etc. Right? There is a, a double-sided adhesive sticky tape that comes on the, um, the provided antenna. If you reach behind the dash, you'll find a rubber seal. You can push that rubber seal down with your fingers, and you'll see this leads right into the dashboard. So if I grab the end of it, push it down on the dash, you're able to see right here, right through here, how the cable does come right through. So go ahead and push that all the way through. Apply your double-sided tape and mount your antenna right in front of the eye. You can go ahead and clean up the cabling. Now we're ready to install the, uh, the provided microphone. So this is necessary to install. The factory microphone will not be retained. We recommend installing that right above the steering wheel to avoid any wind noise. Obviously it's a Jeep. We can take our top off or doors off. Um, so I found the best spot to be right here above the steering wheel. What I'll do is I'll go ahead and get it wired through. However, I'm not gonna mount it. Recommendation is to, is to not fully adhere the tape to the steering wheel, uh, to the steering column until after the dash is in place or it'll it'll uh, it'll get in the way of the reinstallation. I'm going to fish this cable through the back of the the dash. Pull this all the way through. And again, I wouldn't adhere this yet. Just go ahead and set this up here which is gonna be right on top of the steering wheel column. Go ahead and, and clean this area with a alcohol swab. Uh, make sure it's free of any dust. Now I'm cleaning up all of the access cable. Next, we're gonna install this OBD too. Uh, what this does is it, it allows us to retain the vehicle data and diagnostics. For this, I do recommend uh, a fish tape or, or a hanger of some sort. Um, you do have to run a cabling down to the bottom of the dash. Good part is there's a, there's a channel way. It's pretty simple just to push this all the way through. And it'll come right out the bottom. So the LBD is where we're going to plug this right into here. Recommend plugging this in first and then running the cable through. There's a pathway where you can run the cable on top of this cable here. This factory cable. And then above over here there's a bridge on the dash, the lower dash. You can run the cable across that. Go ahead and feed the cable through. And you'll be able to tuck this nice and neat right behind the dash lip. Now that you have attached this to your fish tape or hanger, whichever you decide or have, have handy. All right, now we're ready to reinstall the cabling. Um, it, it, this is pretty simple. This is just really matching uh, port to port on the cables out of the head unit or out of the Jeep and with the head unit. I will say that there is one cable that is not going to be retained and that's what we disconnected with the Uconnect. So you can go ahead and tuck this one down below or tuck it behind and just know that, that you will not need that for the new installation. It's the little square gray one. And in this Jeep, it has a manufacturer's tag on it that shows this model number, 523AA, if that helps. 
And now we'll just connect wires to wires. And there's a couple that I'll walk you through what they do. This of course is your factory main. This cable here is the OBD and this connects color to color with the red, yellow and with the red, yellow. Next, you can take the cable that's coming out of the dash, which is the gray square. That's our navigation cable we ran. This is for your navigation. And on the back of the head unit, it says GPS. This cable here is the new cable that we installed that connected to the Uconnect slot. And this retains your factory USB charging that's located in the center console. So on the back of the on the back of the head unit is a slot labeled USB. USB plugs in the USB. Next we're going to install the microphone cable that we ran to above the steering console and it is this cable here and that'll plug right into the red port in the back of the head unit. Lastly we're going to install these two factory cables to the head unit. One is for the Sirius XM and one is for the AM, AM FM. The AM FM cable that's connected to the back of the head unit terminates into the red and white cable, the factory red and white cable. The last cable to install, this Jeep here was equipped with a stock Sirius XM. So if you opt for that in your bundle, then this Sirius XM will come installed in your head unit. And you can connect these last two cables, which is the yellow mustard looking factory cable to the green one on the Sirius XM. And that's it for the for the ins for the cables at least. I'm gonna take a take a double check here and make sure that everything is seated in tight and it is ready to slide in the head unit next we're ready to go ahead and tuck the cabling back into the head unit slot just carefully tuck the cabling back Be sure not to pinch any of the cables. You see there is plenty of room to store all of the, the spare cabling. As you can see, lines right up with the factory slots. Go ahead and install a couple of these screws. Just install two of them. This is a temporary hold. What we want to do is we want to turn the vehicle on, turn the head unit on, and make sure that we have all of our connections properly seated. Another good point to make here is that all of these connections are plastic, right? Um, however, we are using you know, a power tool, uh, there's no need to over tighten it. Just a secure hold is what you're after. Great. So we have power. It turned on. Just know that this turned into and on to demo mode. So we want to make sure don't press OK here. Run through your settings first. So language, English, is that if that's correct, yes. Demo mode, make sure you turn that off. You're no longer in demo mode. You're now going to use this device. Set date and time. Let's go ahead and set the date and time. Today's date is 10, 12. The time is... 3.55 p.m. Okay, the date format is okay like that. 
and format 12 hour is okay. And that is it. Everything is okay, demo mode is off, the language of your choice is chosen, and today's date is entered. Go ahead and hit enter, and the safety message close. So, so now we know the, the unit works as far as the power's on, the date time, etc. Uh, let's make sure that our radio is connected or serious and, and we can run through those functions as well real quick. So the stereo's on, our volume works, our station buttons work in our steering wheel, thank you to the maestro. And we go back to home. All right, now we're ready to install our phone. And since this is a wireless system, this is, this is fantastic. So since I'm using an iPhone, it's automatically going to recognize it. You can go to Bluetooth, click add new device. In your menu on your phone, you're gonna wait till it populates with whatever model number head unit you're installing. Since this is the Sony 6000, It'll show XAV-AX6000 in your phone. Go ahead and select that option in your phone. And there we go. m -tracks iPhone. It's going to confirm that in your phone. Go ahead and allow your contacts. And it shows I'm connected to the head unit. It's also going to ask me on here if I want to use the CarPlay with the head unit. And I do. I want to use Apple CarPlay. Please select one of these wireless connections below and I want to use the Apple CarPlay. And there we go. Now I'm connected. Which, if you had the head unit that I had, this is already I mean, this is super exciting, right? This is, this is GPS that we didn't have before. This is a wireless GPS that, that we obviously didn't have before. All right, now we know everything works. The radio works, Apple CarPlay works, GPS works, wireless works. Go back to home, and in case you want to get back to that, hit the Apple CarPlay, and boom, you're in all of your apps. Put this in drive, parking brake up. So before we put this back up, make sure that all four connections are, are reconnected back into uh, the panel here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pop this back in. This simply just snaps right back into place. We want to do before we uh, screw in all of their dash pieces, just make sure that all of these factory buttons still operate. The charge, the traction control, the downhill assist, your flashers, your uh, 110 port, and of course your heated seats. And go ahead and put that back in the park, turn the auxiliary off, and remove the keys so we can install the rest of the dash. All right, so we want to go ahead and start uh, with the head unit with completing the install. We only installed two uh, before just to make sure that our functions were set up properly, which they are now, so we can complete the, the head unit. Install. It's in there, nice and tight. All of the wires are nice and tucked below. It looks like that's in there nice. Let's go ahead and reinstall the dash piece now. This of course just fits right over. And sets right in. So remember there are four screws here. There's one up top, one inside here and two under here. Now that the main dash piece is in, we can go ahead and install the lower dash piece. So remember the lower dash piece slides in down below first, just lifts right up, snaps right in. Now that we have that, we can finalize our microphone placement. Again, that's what we've found as to be the best location for that. That's out of the way. The last piece to install is our uh, window switches. 
That snaps right in. And lock the second piece. And push it in. All right, we have everything installed. We, we have tested the functions. We've showed you a little bit about it. I want to do a, a little bit of a run through here just to show you what you're getting with the CarPlay versus what in, in comparison with what you had before, right? As, as a JK owner, um, personally, um, and for all of you, 2007 to 2018 JK owners, um, th this is this is a step up. This is this is you know modernizing y your your JK to to what technology is available now in new vehicles, right? Um, so to run through this, uh, and if if you're anything you know remotely uh, like I am, I don't want to have that beeping noise. Just to show you, system system sound is what removes that beeping noise. All right. I just wanted to show that to you real quick. Everything else, this, this is, is, is fully customizable. Um, what I wanted to show you some of the functions though, is what we were talking about earlier with the Maestro, some of the displays that you're going to be able to, uh, to view that you couldn't before other than going through the analog system, all apps, vehicle info. It's now going to display your tire pressure, your engine, uh, you can completely customize what alerts you want to set, your tire alerts, your doors alerts, your driver positioning. Um, you can completely customize, you know, anything that you had, anything really in the vehicle like you've never been able to before. Um, as far as your other settings, actually, let's go back into apps for a minute. Uh, let's look at the gauges as I was referring to. Of course, the vehicle's not on, so it's not going to run any RPMs, but this is going to show your intake temperature, your fuel level, your miles per hour, your RPMs, and the second screen here. <laughs> so this was always something funny. Uh, again, being a JK owner, I'm on the trails. I, I use the Jeep to, to it, its intended purpose. You know zero to 60 so if you ever want a zero to 60 clock your uh your rock crawling hey you can do it now right if you haven't before you can do that now home function um and i think the the biggest key to this here is is if you had the head unit that it was previously in this jk um, it didn't have a display whatsoever you know we now have a full gps touch screen and wireless so looking into CarPlay, you know, and going to the home screen inside CarPlay, which is the app screen, this is where you're going to have the, uh, the ability to fully customize all of the apps that you didn't have before, right? Any map that you wanted to load on here, anything that you're going to load into your phone is going to be displayed into your CarPlay. So any map function or any map app that you, that you opt to use. Um, of course, your messages, when, you, when somebody is messaging you now, it's going to play through your, 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 your head unit. So thank you for joining me today on this install. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. I hope you see the value as I do in, in my JK. If you're interested in picking one of these bundles up from Trail 7, please visit us at www.trail7.com.